Going back across now to Chris Hatfield, uh, Chris, those images of the ISRO chairman with the Indian Prime Minister. It's been a very emotional journey and uh, I want to uh, ask you to share with us uh, your perspectives on uh, the very fact that India has come so far and uh, the multiple feats that it has achieved over the last few months. What a terrific year it's been for the Indian Space Research Organization. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, they're accelerating in their capabilities. Well, Molly, maybe it helps to compare it to, to my own experience. I was an astronaut for 21 years. I was in the astronaut office when we lost Columbia, the most tragic of all the failures in all of the successes and all of the failures that we saw in all those years to lose a spaceship and, and lose crew members. But then you have to ask, what are we going to do next? Yes, we've lost something. It didn't go the way we wanted. But what really matters is what are we going to do now? And as the Prime Minister said, is the best still yet to come? And since that accident in 2003 with Columbia, that's when so many of the great things happened in the, in the space program, where we finished building the International Space Station, where we fixed and released the Hubble telescope to, to show us the universe. And, and so what's, what's resting with ISRO and India right now is exactly what the prime minister was talking about. This is a thing that didn't go the way we wanted. There's still a tremendous amount that was learned from it, and it opens up the doors to being able to do stuff in the future that you can hardly even imagine right now. I really agree with them. The best is yet to to come. It would have been lovely if everything had gone perfectly today, but they didn't. The real thing that matters is what is everybody going to do next? Absolutely. And as he said, and as you're also mentioning, uh, these uh, uh, glitches, minor glitches, uh, uh, open the way for new innovations. And ISRO is known for its never say die attitude, it is something that the Prime Minister also delved upon. Uh, Chris, before we let you go, this has been an extremely complex mission. For those uninitiated, elaborate for our viewers why a soft landing is uh, so difficult and so complex. Uh, part of it is just you don't really know exactly where you're landing. You, you don't know what the surface is going to be like. It could be covered in boulders. It could have an angle. It could be very soft. It could be extremely hard. Um, you're also doing it from 400,000 kilometers away, so there's a time lag. Um, it's also a piece of equipment that, that you've never properly tested in that type of environment. You've done every test you can do, but until you actually go do it for real, you don't get to learn everything. So it's many, many things things all put together and you're hoping you've got everything right but you don't normally get everything right first time so the, the complexity the distance the time the, the technical challenges even the great unknowns of the moon itself India has moved slightly closer to understanding all of those things it gives much greater chance for success uh, with Chandrayaan 3 I guess but um, but also the orbiter is going to help answer some of those questions over the next year as it surveys and better understands the surface of the moon. We are one step closer to better understanding that heavenly body and to eventually people, including Indians, going there and having a chance to live somewhere besides the Earth. Absolutely. One step closer and a giant leap in the country's space journey so far. We are going to leave it there for the moment, though. Chris Hatfield. Appreciate very much you joining us on the broadcast and sharing those perspectives. Now, even as communication was lost with the Vikram lander of the Chandrayaan 2, it's been an extremely ambitious mission. And uh, let's tell you that this has been just a minor glitch. The orbiter is very much doing the rounds and doing its job in all its glory, as the Prime Minister just said. It has a mission life of one year. It will continue to study the moon from afar. Only 5% of the mission has been lost, which is Vikram the lander and Pragyan the rover, while the remaining 95%, which is the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter, is still orbiting the moon successfully. Now, the possibilities are immense. The orbiter can take several images of the moon and send them back to ISRO. It will also be taking images perhaps of the lander to know its status. The successful launch of Chandrayaan-2 on board the giant GSLV Mark III rocket and its subsequent insertion in the lunar orbit being seen as a testament to India's frugal space program as well. The Chandrayaan-2 mission stood out because of its low cost of about $140 million only as compared to, for example, the US Apollo missions which cost more than $100 billion.